So we continue with federating and uh, test beds. Hi. Yeah. Good morning. My name is Asanka Rukawa. So I'm also like Jens from Bremen. Uh, so two caveats. Uh, I'm me personally getting into Omnet, so it's it's quite uh, new to me. And also like uh, so. Uh, uh, my presentation is a fairly high level one, uh, not so detail, not so much details. So we are trying to build uh, a communication architecture for uh, the Internet of Things, and we wanted to see like uh, so we uh, on, on the one hand we are looking at test beds, so we want to have a large test a test bed. We are building a, a IoT test bed with thousands of devices including like hundreds of smartphones. And then on the other hand, we want to go beyond. So we wanted to uh, include Omnet. So we want to federate the, the testbed and the Omnet simulation. So that is what we've been looking into. And that is uh, what my talk is all about. So uh, the architecture that we are building is called Kichi. It's, it's uh, 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 a communication architecture for, for uh, the Internet of Things. I will uh, briefly describe this architecture, what sort of aspects that it has or exploits. And then, so what we want to do is to have a common uh, code base that could also be run on the, the Kichi uh, devices, the real devices, plus Omnet, because we want to go beyond uh, the, the real, the test bed. And then, so the Omnet model that I've uh, been looking into uh, fairly sort of uh, preliminary. And then the scenarios that we want to look at and the evaluation aspects that we've considered and the summary and the future work. So Kichi. So as you know, like networks are going in the direction of being information centric. So we exploit information centricity of, of communication right now. The Kichi architecture uh, is, is, you know, has distributed control. So devices decide for themselves like what they want to do. So they are fairly independent. And Part of information centricity is also caching. So it, uh, the nodes have distributed caching. And we also have included like machine learning into the into uh, Kichi. Uh, and we specifically look at reinforcement learning based data handling. And finally, we look at opportunistic data propagation. That means the nodes like identify what opportunities they have to communicate and simply send the data. So just we, we have some other uh, uh, publication that we, where we describe the Kichi architecture, but just to give you a brief idea, it has two, me uh, the, the architecture is dependent on two message types, the data and the feedback. So as you can see on this, uh, uh, we look at different scenarios. In this one is a sort of a recycling application that we looked at. So Alice in this case knows of a, of a red sofa that has to be, uh, 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 recycled or used uh, for available and Alice gives uh, a value for this sofa like the information give, gives a value to this information which we call as the goodness value which is 10 in this case and then propagates this information so this works like you know like a grapevine a, a gossip network where you know I come and tell somebody hey I know something uh, good that you may also like some people say hey, I don't like it some people say, hey, I, I'm interested in that. So it works in this way. So as you can see, uh, the, 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 uh, Alice simply uh, 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 gives a value of 10, or the, the Kichi architecture assigns a value because of the activities of Alice, assigns a value of 10, a goodness value. This information gets propagated. Bob likes it as well. So the 10 value holds, and then Bob uh, looks a little bit more on this uh, particular information, the, the red sofa, and suddenly the, the value increases because he's more interested. And after a while, you know, over time, the information, the staleness uh, results in the, 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 the value uh, being reduced. When Bob meets Charlie, it's propagated to Charlie. Of course, Charlie is sort of uh, not that uh, uh, keen on it, but has looked at it, and it propagates this information further. And based on this information, Bob again re-evaluates uh, and then assigns a lower value. 
And then after a while, Charlie deletes the, says, hey, I'm not that interested anymore in this. But of course, the network still has it, so the, the value is lower. So in this way, like as I said, it's like, you know, like a, a grapevine where the information gets propagated, some like it, some don't. So that's basically what the architecture is all about. So going into the, so this is where the, the, the rest of the work uh, uh, is. So looking into the code base, we, uh, so we wanted to have a common code base where the key chi functionality will be held in one library, so to speak, and will be deployed in any of the devices. For example, we, we, we have, you know, <coughs> of course we have, we have uh, uh, the, the Android devices in, in our testbed, so we want to run it there. Of course, we also want to run it in, in, in uh, Omnet. So the Kichi architecture is a three-layer uh, protocol stack. You have the Kichi functionality, uh, different link technologies at the, at the bottom, and then the different applications. So when we looked at the requirements, as I said, we want to have this running on the testbed, the te devices on the testbed, plus on simulation. So when we looked at the architecture, we wanted to build an uh, independent library, which is like uh, write once and, and you know compile anywhere type uh, 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 code. So we had to provide an API to access the functionality of, of processing messages, uh, doing the opportunistic networking aspect. And then for every platform, because you have the platform indi uh, independent part, which is basically the, uh, the, the, the platform dependent part rather, which is basically adapted to work on any of the platforms. For example, in Android, we had to have the, the JNI uh, type of interface to, 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 to access the Kichi lib. And in Omnet, of course, it is just a pass through that, that goes through. So basically, we, this is how we want to architecture the, the, the code base. So we, are, we have worked on it. We are building the, the, the functionality. Uh, a lot of the functionality is available. So uh, when you look at the Kichi uh, library, you see that we, we expose like a set of functions for processing incoming messages, and then doing the opportunistic uh, message generations because it, it does the opportunistic networking. And of course, status information and you know wiring for statistics specifically when you consider uh, a simulator. So here is an example of, of, a, of one of the functions to uh, to handle incoming feedback messages. As I said, there are two messages, the data and the feedback message. And so this basically says from where the message is coming, is it coming from the pro uh, protocols that, uh, uh, the layer above or below, and then the message itself, and then of course the current time. So now now we want to integrate, so we, are, we don't want to be, uh, be dependent on, on, on the clock time. So we want to sort of the library should uh, doesn't have to get the, the clock time, but has to be given the current time because you know we want to uh, in the simulations you have the simulation time and in the in when you run it on a device you have the of course the clock time, but we still want to uh, we, we want to make sure that uh, uh, the, the 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 synchronization aspects, and then of course once it is done. Uh, once it is processed, it sends a, a kill action uh, type object, which uh, tells, uh, of course, uh, the, 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 the Omnit what to do afterwards, uh, after the processing is done. Or, for example, the Android environment, what has to be done after that. So, as I said, uh, preliminary, we've looked into uh, uh, the Omnit model, uh, building an Omnit model. So we are. We've identified like this three-layer protocol stack with the Kichi functionality. Of course, we want to leverage the existing uh, uh, models uh, uh, of, of Omnet, the mobility models, the traffic models, the virus propagation model. But they they are really good as our starting point. But uh, the, the 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 environment that we are looking at, the scenarios that we are looking at, are a bit different. Uh, from the mobility patterns are different, so we want to go beyond and extend uh, the, the, the model uh, in terms of the, the Kichi functionality. And of course, we want to build some new features, like uh, for example, uh, now the, the general principle of the Kichi architecture is peer-to-peer -peer communications. So one of the things that is currently available, like uh, widely available, is you know Wi-Fi Direct. So we want to sort of build 
uh, we have some work being done on building a Wi-Fi direct module into Omnet. Of course, there are many issues that have to be resolved uh, in terms of, of Kichi because, uh, uh, I mean, for example, one of the issues is uh, uh, in Wi-Fi direct, like you have to have this authentication all the time for every message that goes. So we need to see how that scales in, in, in terms of the Kichi this uh, large scale environment. So there are some issues that we want to uh, uh, look into, but generally we want to extend and we, we are looking into different energy and expenditure models. So uh, that's where we are uh, sort of right now uh, building gradually this model we, uh, in terms of the, the identifying the Wi-Fi direct, for example, specification and then trying to build that functionality. So going into like the simulated scenarios and the performance evaluations. So we identify a number of uh, uh, scenarios like emergency services, for example, such social networking. But our, our sort of uh, guiding one is, is uh, uni recycler because we come from a university background and in the university there is a lot of requirement for recycling stuff because we have you know fresh freshmen coming in and they need you know furniture and stuff like that so we want to sort of that that will be our sort of testing ground so we want to uh, 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 use it that's our our uh, scenario main scenario like the grapevine so as I said, as I said uh, it's peer-to-peer, -peer, decentralized, distributed communications because everyone has their devices and they want to share information. And you know, one might take this information. We don't want to use the infrastructure because you know, Wi-Fi direct. Uh, most of the the freshmen like would ha have you know a smart device uh, with them. So so that's you know where we are going at. And then of course uh, uh, it'll be you know every device will be caching and then we'll be having opportunistic communication based on the Kichi architecture. So on the right, you see, like this is a simple scenario that we wanted to simulate. At the moment, like we have a basic setup that, that uh, does this. Uh, so you have uh, nodes that are, you know, propagating this information, and uh, that's that's what we have right now. So not results as such, but but we are like in the dire uh, going in this direction. Sorry. So uh, uh, for performance, like we want to see how, because we are using machine learning in our, uh, our, our uh, architecture, so we want to see how the feedback system, because the feedback is the one that sort of builds this uh, 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 system of, of the goodness value. So we want to see how that behaves. So, you know, this is best evaluated in a sort of a large scale network like with many uh, nodes in it, so we want to see like how the feedback system works. We want to see how the opportunistic data pro propagation strategies. There are a number of strategies that we have included into the Kichi architecture that uh, decides on how to propagate the data. Uh, is it like suitable? I mean, is it uh, uh, appropriate now to send the data, or should I hold it for later? Or have I sent data bef this data before, so maybe I could consider other data? So there are a number of strategies. So we want to see in large scale projects how the, the strategies work. Of course, different caching strategies, and of course uh, the different mobility patterns. As I said before, like there are different uh, uh, mobility like requirements uh, in in this you know grapevine like like. Uh, uh, propagation of information, so we want to see how that behaves. So, the summary and and what we want to do for the future, of course. So we are it's it's sort of continuing work. So we are developing uh, the communication architecture uh, right now, uh, and then you know to to uh, this is more like uh, the conceptual level, and then we are also looking at the the the, the common code base. Uh, for test beds as well as the simulations, and for future work. So, at the moment, like what 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 our plan is like? Okay, we have you know the com the common code base is the focus, the 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 right ones you know compile anywhere type uh, uh, focus, but we want to go beyond and see how they they sort of integrate uh, the the simulations in real time. So this is like one of the areas that we also want to go into the future, where we want to see like how data from from the the, 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 the test bed can be fed into like real time and then you know some of some there were some uh, discussions on that so 
maybe uh, that is like some of some some inspiration there uh, but generally that's uh, something that we also want to uh, look at for the future so thank you for the short one Again, we're on time, so <laughs> surprisingly, <laughs> yeah, I think speakers make my life quite easy in this session. So, uh, questions regarding the federation, uh, different test bed environments, and on the catchy. So, how about the common code base? Um, I imagine that's quite a uh, that's quite a drag and a bit complicated uh, to have a common code base between Omnet who does things in a specific way, and uh, for example, an Android application does things totally different. Uh, in, in the sense that, okay, what we want to do is, so the common code base has a set of, you know, the interface is very clear. Mm -hmm. You get a message, what do you do? So because all the stuff was stored in, in or uh, under the control of the common functionality of the common code base, for example, the cache and so on, and the uh, neighborhood, what, how, what is the neighborhood that, mm -hmm. that was there. So, but I mean, what we, what we identified was that, okay, whatever message that comes, for example, let's take the Android environment. You, you get a message coming up, let's say from the lower layer, and the Android environment simply passes this through the JNI interface, to uh, the common code base, and the common code base uh, processes this, and then simply sends uh, the scale action back with with the, the actions that have mm -hmm. to be taken. So it's it's not that complicated. It's it's of course there might be complications. As, uh, uh, I, at least from from what we have now, we don't see a lot of complications because we sort of have this separation of, of the the code base and then the, the, the platform on which we are running. So, so in a way, I... Okay, at the so you have taken actually you quite a lot of work out from the actual system and delivered uh, over yeah. the Kichi as the platform. Yes, yes. It's the Kichi, I mean, of course, the Kichi lib handles all that functionality that is totally related to mm -hmm. doing opportunistic, you know, learn uh, 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 learning based, uh, uh, you know, machine learning uh, uh, stuff that, that are done by it. And then it returns something that has to be acted on by the platform. So, so it is, I mean, what I could say is like fairly sort of straightforward uh, at the moment. So I, I'm... Questions, remarks? Maybe people from uh, other universities or companies that have test beds in place and can say something about their uh, experience with federating on them with a test bed. Anyone here has fed anything more than a couple of sensor data or uh, <laughs> something over a TCP IP connection uh, or the real time scheduler? We're going to have to talk about that afterwards. But I think it's uh, it's a quite important task of uh, not only getting your uh, your results and uh, comparing them with the real world, but also mm -hmm. taking the real world system and trying to federate it with yeah. that. Mm -hmm. But uh, we wanted to go beyond, like because even the thousands of devices that we are planning, we, we consider them to be like you know uh, real small. So we mm -hmm. want to go beyond, and, and so Omnet was one of the, the you know. For, from my experience, like because I'm also getting into you know one of the I I worked on uh, Opnet before, so I generally know the, the simulation. But you know, uh, when I came into Opnet, that was one of the you know nicely written <laughs> pieces of, of uh, you know code, that, especially when I compare Opnet. <laughs> because I, I spoke, you know, I written my PhD using. Uh, uh, Opnet, so yeah. but uh, it's it's one of the. <laughs> I think Andros would love to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I mean, it's it's, it's 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 more than a compliment. It's you know for me, it's it's one of the easiest thing to get into. The the sort of learning curve for me, what I have learned, is is much nicer in in Opnet <laughs> than in, in, in Opnet uh, that I had. Uh, we also have uh, another offer from the paper here. Um, is the, the 
fest with the testbed infrastructure plus the federation afterwards go on it? Is it going to be like openly available? Yeah, yeah, that's the plan. That's the plan. We are still working on both the test bed, which is also a lot of work because the hardware itself yeah, is still there. Uh, and also, so, but it will be actually open source. Once we have something to share, we will share. Okay. Well, I'm looking forward for that because uh, it's going to be a big thing. Uh, mm -hmm. like both the test bed and then the you know, ability to integrate it with OnNet and do simulation. Yeah. We have done it before in a little bit much smaller scale, okay. which was federating tiny OS code with OnNet. Mm -hmm. It also worked actually pretty well. Uh, at some point, there was this problem that we, we actually developed it exactly before uh, Omnet was transferred to version 4, fourth version, and then we didn't transfer it mm. to the newer version. But it worked pretty well, actually. It was surprisingly easy to federate them if you're working really at the level of communication architectures, because there you can always abstract really the level of messages. Yeah. The work before, for example, the smart grid there is really tough because you don't have a, a common base for yeah. everything. You cannot abstract at the, at the level of messages. You have to abstract at different levels for each different simulator in the mass. Mm -hmm. uh, there it's really tough. Here it's much more cleaner to do that. Cut at exactly the top of the questions? That's not the case, so let's thank the speaker again.